hide. Adjust this. Happy Saturday for those of you who are joining us on the weekends. Um, and if you're watching this afterwards, hi Denise. Um, and if you're watching this afterwards, then um, good for you. Stick with your art, keep being creative. Hi Terry. And um, let's see where, uh, where our creativity takes us this weekend. Hello, Sophie. Uh, yes, I decided that I would um, do video today, but maybe I'll take off tomorrow. Um, my husband and I are going to, we're at home alone, so we're going to figure out um, some kind of an Easter thing um, at, at home tomorrow. So maybe, maybe that'll be a brunch or something. So I'm not, I don't want to commit to tomorrow. So let's say today we'll watch, maybe Monday. Um, but let's get on with this, shall we? Because I have a lot of things I want to fix in this painting. And when I say fix, um, I did a little fussing before you guys uh, tuned in today. So you'll see a few changes. Some of them are not exactly... Um, uh, concrete. I haven't glued them in or anything. I just kind of wet them and stuck them in. Um, oh, that's nice. So Sophie's family is doing a Zoom family meeting. That's amazing. Um, we've been having these cocktail parties with our friends um, every weekend and one night of the weekend and it's super fun. It's really fun. Um, I have to say, like I mentioned yesterday, I'm not hating this pace. <laughs> of this slowing down for a time. Anyway, let's talk about this painting because you'll see a few changes that have happened. And um, I was going to pull out what I what I don't like and then I was going to change and then I was gonna do a few things and I thought, no, I'll just wait until you guys are watching so that you can see um, how I go back in and I fix things, if you will. Um, okay, so one of the comments was um, that he looks like he has just one big leg, right? So at the front. And so I told you my image was really distorted because this moose was walking through um, really tall grass, right? You remember the plants and things that were more obvious there earlier? So when I came in today and I looked at it, I went, oh, okay, now I see it. But I can also see that there's an obvious spot and I'll just put it, get some black paint and put it in there. But there's an obvious spot where I can sort of fake in a second front leg um, because it doesn't take much to fool the eye, right? So that's all we need to do is we just need to fool the eye a little bit at times. Looking for some black paint. Uh, here we go. So all we need to do is fool the eye. So that's what I'm going to do here. A little bit of black paint. And we can easily put that leg in. So right in here, I'm going to give the illusion that there is another leg back here, tucked in behind his body. So, and if it's a bit too strong, like I was telling you before, I'll paint it in. Whoops, I forgot to put my microphone on. I'll paint it in. And after I paint it in, I'll uh, probably soften it a little bit with a baby wipe, but I'll let it dry a little bit first. So when you allow it to dry, and then I'm just going to maybe there we go. So that is, is uh, maybe I'll change the shape just a wee bit, but now that's giving us more the illusion that there is a second front leg. So that's um, one of the things that I wanted to address. Second thing um, I was going to address with this painting is, so one of the things you'll notice is just a bit of color blocking. So I did a bit of color blocking um, only so that I would, be able to offer a mid-tone or a lighter mid-tone, hi Maria, or a lighter mid-tone, uh, hi Nikki, to the painting. So you'll notice like some of the highlights and things I talked about here and there. Um, I didn't wanna go from just like light 
to dark. I wanted to have, and then this is kind of like a mid-tone, and then the balloons are sort of currently in um, more in mid-tones to dark tones. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to offer a lighter mid-tone other than this yellow, creamy yellow and the white. So that's why I just popped in a bit of the uh, very, very, very pale blue. And I did that just by doing some random scribbles and then coloring in some of the dots. So whether, or, or the, the shapes. So whether or not they stay, I don't know, but it does add like a bit of whimsy and a bit of movement because when you look at the painting, there's like all these lines and these swirls which keep it moving, which make um, this painting feel weightless, which is really interesting. Um, sorry, my husband is texting me and I, I told him not to text me unless it's important. So I'm just gonna keep peeking over there. Hi, Allison. Um, so yeah, which made me feel like this painting might actually be called weightless. Um, I don't know yet, but it feels really good. So, um, okay, hang on. Text, 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 Polly, what do you want? Nothing yet. Anyway, we'll see what's happening. Okay. Um, it's probably just about the fundraiser, so not to panic, I'm imagining. Um, it's just he's out doing deliveries today, so I told him I'd keep watching for his text. Um, okay, so that was the, the second thing that I wanted to address was just bringing in some different mid-tones because I can't just have dark and then light and then more dark. I need to have a couple of, I need to balance the mid-tones a little bit. So that's the second thing I wanted to show you. Um, the third thing I want to show you is that I just added a little bit of collage. So here was just a little piece of tissue paper that I collaged in. So I can't find any more of the exact same, but it was just a, a, a tissue paper, like of this kind of a weight. I tore a random shape, put some glue on, and then I added it here. And I found that these little markings, these little lines, were kind of, you know, complementing the, the strings. So anyway, so that's the one the next thing I did. And then it felt a little off balance for some reason. This side seemed a little less weighted. So I added a, bland, a band of black here. And that'll be a good spot for me actually to put some black uh, wax on top when I get to the wax part. And then over on this side, these things are just stickers. Then over on this side, I did a very fine banding of black and white. And it's not even black in some cases because I just used a very watery brush. I created a, um, uh, like a, my Beetlejuice technique as my husband always calls it. So, one second, there we go. Okay, so I did that on that side and it feels much more weighted and balanced better now. So that's the, uh, the third thing I wanted to show you. Oh, you can't see the sides. It's really small. So, um, so like this band here is only like a few millimeters thick. So you can see that side. And then maybe you can see the side if I get out of the way. Yeah, so it's really small. Like, because don't forget the scale of this painting, right? Um, these little details on the side are just helping bring, when you look close at it, it's taking your eye outward because otherwise this is so strong in terms of contrast. Hi Janice. It's so strong in terms of contrast, right? We've got our light and our dark right here that I want your eye to be able to travel throughout. So that's why I have these tiny little uh, things on the outside and that's just for for the uh, balance of the value scale, okay? Um, and maybe from far away that doesn't really translate all that well, but up close it's actually kind of necessary to have a little bit better balance. So that was what I wanted to show you in there. Then the next thing I did was I just quickly um, pasted in a bird just to see now I shouldn't have used glue, and I'll tell you why in a second, but I, sh I wanted to paste the bird to see if something a bit more high detail would look good in here, because my balloons aren't gonna be detailed. Our moose is, you know, like his face has a bit more detail now that he's been painted out, but he's anything but 
high resolution because it was a really blurry picture again taken from the sunroof of my truck so um let me turn this just a wee bit for you so you can see both sides there we go so the the bird after i i put it on i was like yep that looks good so i i was really close to it and so i glued them on and then when i was leaving or heading to the back of the studio i turned around and i looked and i went oh the scale's all off so i just want to show you what that would look like when you change your mind on something in a mixed media painting. So we have two options. Um, I could spray this with water. Remember water is highly corrosive to uh, water soluble um, paints, so acrylics and things like that. So if we let water sit on here for a couple minutes, it's gonna soften that paper and then I'll be able to scrape the glue off. So that's no problem. Um, but let's say you're afraid that the water might damage the whole area so we're just going to pretend that that might be the, the scenario and um and we're going to do a different scale of bird so i went and i found a few photocopies of different birds in different sizes and i'm thinking that we might go for one that's like really tiny compared to this big massive bird which compared to the overall scale of the painting is completely off. So there's a couple ways I could address this. One of them is just to put some paint over it, which is probably what I'm going to do. However, we have so much texture and so many subtle colors going on behind here and scraping and scratchings and everything else that if I put paint on, you might still just see the outline of the bird when you look up close and that will look like a mistake. So I'm gonna show you how I I deal with these little um, inconveniences of not checking my scale from far away before gluing something in. All right, notice how I didn't call it a mistake? It's not really a mistake because I can fix it. So I'm going to paint out the bird and as I get closer to the edge, I'm just going to start to feather it out. Because if I paint out like just the outline of the bird, then it's just going to look like a like a shadow of a bird, right? So, as suspected, I can still see the bird quite clearly. But now I'm going to start to feather out that that white, um, always from the center out, and then back against that that lip of where the paper is. And then I'm just going to feather it out and keep doing the same thing. What I want to be careful of is that I'm not having to repaint too much of the mousse. So I'm just going to pay attention to his contours. So this is actually one of my favorite little techniques because it it actually, like I remember, as I've been mentioning before, I don't really ever consider anything a mistake because I feel that every layer adds something. And so each time I wind up doing this sort of additive technique um, and subtractive at the same time, I find that it's going to lend something different to the painting that maybe I hadn't really intended. Um, or hadn't been able to plan in my limited vision of what this painting might look like in the end. So again, if you're doing something that's like an exact painting from, you know, an oil painting from a photo or something like that, then this really doesn't apply. Unless you're having to fix something, then you always know your own way of fixing something, right? So, hi, says Ash. We'll make one balloon red. Will I make one balloon red? Maybe. I'm going to address balloons in a minute. Um, so, um, yeah, so I, I've got the bird kind of camouflaged in here, but as well, the bird is really integrated, okay? So that's the one thing I really wanted to make sure that I did was just integrate that bird as best as I can, but up close, I can still see the outline of the bird. So this is where 
I tend to have a little fun with um, with playing with tissue papers and napkins. So I can incorporate some tissue back in here. And this one has like a silver polka dot and from the reverse, it's like a really subtle gold. So I think I'm gonna use that one. Um, I have a bunch of other tissue papers here, but they're really, and napkins, but they're really quite um, bold in pattern. You see what I mean? Like I've got that and then I have that. And it's not that I have anything against polka dots, but I already have the whimsy and the balloons and the lines and I just don't want to do overkill. So, um, I am just going to use my tissue paper and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rip it into some random shapes and I'm going to try and get rid of any hard lines. So the edges that are, that are um, squared off, I'm going to get rid of most of those and only because hard lines are, um, your eye just kind of stops dead. So, let's do this. Okay, so I've got my tissue paper torn up now. Now I'm gonna grab a glue brush. My glue situation is getting dire, by the way, guys. I just got a message this morning from Home Depot that my order, for some reason, is being delayed till around April 20th. So, I'm gonna have to come up with something really different for next week because we are scraping the bottom of that barrel. Okay, so I'm going to put the glue where I want the tissue paper. So in this case, I'm going to put the tissue sort of all along this guy's back. So if I just put it where the, the bird was, Right? If I just put it where the bird was, then, whoops, I said I was going to do it backwards. Okay. Let me find the best fit. I'm just trying to find the best fit for it so that I don't have to um, cut or tear all of it. So this part, I'm just going to tear off because it's going off on a weird angle. And I want to try and follow the contours of the body. Again, I'll just put a bit of glue there. This is practically water at this point, but hopefully if you're doing something like this, you all have more glue than me. So I'm not adding more glue to my brush when I go on top of the tissue. I get that question a lot. I'm actually um, just, I've got very little glue on here because I'm, I'm short on glue, right? And instead, I'm just spreading out my glue quite thin and then using my brush to push the tissue into the glue that's on the background. So, I've got one more little spot up here that you probably can't see, but it's obvious to me. to do a bit more in here so it doesn't look like I'm, I'm fixing something, right? So, that's a good one. It actually kind of nicely follows the back. And then where it's going to overlap, I'm just going to tear it. So as I was saying, every artist will probably have their ways of camouflaging um, a mistake or fixing something. This is just one of my favorite ways because it almost ends up looking um, like to me afterwards when I look at it. I can't tell sometimes whether or not I had, um, and this is like, okay, so not like minutes afterwards, but I actually can't tell sometimes if um, 
years later or months later or weeks later or whatever, when I'm looking at my painting with fresh eyes, I sometimes can't tell if I was actually fixing something or if that had been an intentional um, adjustment or addition. So um, a little bit of the bird is still showing because I had black around it, but you'll see when I put the other bird there, I don't think it's actually going to make that much of a difference. So one more little piece, and I'll probably put it over by the face. And that way it, oh, I have a few more teeny little pieces. Um, but these are quite square, so I think maybe I'll leave them out. Um, oh, or, see there's always an or, right? Because now I'm thinking maybe I could just collage it in up here for a bit of continuity. Oh, that looks spectacular, and I have one more, so I'm gonna put it over here. Um, see these little things sometimes are just, meant to be, right? So I love this, that it's following the contours of this painting. Awesome. So it's very subtle and I can bring the camera in later and we can look at it um, closer up. But now I have to integrate a wee bit and it's not a lot if I have any questions because that was a lot um, okay let me just go back here for a second will the wax adhere because of the plastic circles um, they're not plastic actually it's just like a little foil and it's in the tissue paper um, and on top of it I've used the reverse but yes you don't have to deglaze that so that's good and then Sophie said you are putting wax over the paper will it be okay with the wax afterwards sorry you're putting glue glue yeah, so um, exactly, so the little um, dots are just foil. Um, in tissue papers, there's all kinds of foils and metallics and just ink and whatever else. Um, here's another one, right? So this just has a, um, ink on it, and but it's printed on one side, so even the reverse is even better. But the reality is for that little amount, the wax will actually, um, will penetrate no problem. The one problem you will have though, is because the wax doesn't really, or the glue doesn't really uh, seep through. The one issue you will have is like, if you're using a really metallic foil like this and you put wax on it, for anybody who has any, um, uh, any history with doing any encaustic, the, the wax completely mattifies and almost changes the color of, um, of metallics. So if you're really, set on and focus on keeping your metallic shiny then you wouldn't um, top coat them with anything other than like a, a matte medium or gloss medium or something like that as soon as you put wax on it, you change the um, look of it all together okay so now i'm just going to integrate the back of this um, mousse a little bit and i was silly because normally what i do at night is i take my palette because i had all the colors on there i just put a little um I always keep a roll of plastic, you know, like just for wrapping gifts and stuff. And then I just roll it on top. And then that way, when I take it off the next day, I can use the, the wet paint that's on here and on here. And then I don't have to re-mix um, and or dispense my colors again. So unfortunately, I have to get a few colors going in here from our backgrounds so that it doesn't look entirely foreign with new colors. So this might have been a bit of a, a mistake last night in not covering it with a little piece of plastic, which is super easy and super affordable to do. And just, like I said, just a wee oversight. And I put a bit of white there so I have it to grab. Okay, now I'm gonna use a scruffier brush because if I go in with my my really fine brush there. I'm not going to get the same kind of detail I'm going for in the background. So I have a little bit of the 
yellow and a little bit of the yellow with the white. So I'm just going to go in and brush over some of that tissue paper. And this is again, right, we're just integrating that new addition of that tissue paper. So when I was telling you what I was doing, I wasn't saying that this is like the easiest route. To me, it's like, it's an additional route uh, or it's an additional layer of work. But in the end, I believe it's going to be um, worth it because I actually think it's, it's a layer that I haven't thought of before that will actually add to the overall look. So adding in a bit of color in the background. There we go. So again, we're just going to work this in with um, using the same colors I've been working with earlier. Tissues lifting, so I need some more glue under there. Like I said, my glue is at a premium here, so I'm being very, very stingy with it. Well, that's interesting. My brush, I haven't cleaned it, and now I'm just getting a little bit of a black wash, which is kind of necessary anyway. So um, that was fortuitous. Okay. So that's good. Now let's get in here with some more white and a bit of yellow. Clean up some of these obvious fix areas. The other thing that the wax is going to do is where I put those dots, which I'm not sure how much you can see from far away. But where I've added those dots, um, you can kind of see a little bit of a transition just in the height of the papers and the, the background. It's uh, not to be sort of um, worried about at all because it's when I put the wax on, it'll it'll just be another layer of texture. It'll really smooth it out nicely and look super intentional, which is kind of what I was going. layer in there, a bit more white up here. So this is kind of like behind the mousse, right? We had a bit of color happening behind the mousse. I'm just going to go in and add a bit of the dark because I did have a little bit of that going on. So I'll, I'll reintegrate that. Right, we're not going for high detail here. We're going for um, impression. So the brain fills in so much information for us. It's crazy and thank God it does that or my paintings most of the time wouldn't be as effective as they are because I do use blurry pictures. I do use um, my own photographs and I am not a photographer and I can't get moose on the side of the road to hold still and everything else. So I've got to deal with what I've got to deal with, right? So it is a good thing that the brain fills in a lot of details for us because those details those details are, are sort of important to the look, the overall look of things, but not always possible um, if you don't have them in the first place. So this isn't a high resolution photo. There we go. So, got that in there. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to actually work in the moose back himself, give him a little bit more of his color back into him. So I'm just picking up like a super messy brush. And when I say a messy brush, I'm picking up like every color that I have and I'm not blending them. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little of this, little of that, and just kind of whatever comes out of the, the bristles, that's, that's what the moose is getting. So, and I'm, I'm holding this so lightly that I could drop it at any second, but that's allowing me not to make like smeary marks. I actually just want it to look really, really light and natural. And it's almost like I painted each individual hair. 
The other thing I'm doing is I'm being sh making sure that I'm crossing over the hair so they're not all going in the exact same direction. And that's just also providing a bit more natural look. Again, probably not realistic at all. It's all good. Flipping over my brush to put different colors back there. And a little fun little pop of blue just came out, which is looking pretty darn sweet. It feels neat. When I, I just picked up a bit too much pressure when I did that, and because I had too much pressure, it just it looks a little smeary like I was talking about. So I'm just going to go in with a bit more paint and a lighter touch, and I'm going to attempt to um, soften that area. Tail's a little tough, poofy, but that's okay. We're not going for actual detailed loose here. We're just going for color suggestions, which, like I said, thank goodness the eyes and the brains work the way they do because so much of this will be interpreted as highly skilled detail when neither of those things are actually present. Okay. Fabulous. Now, you know what? Now while I have the loaded brush, I'm actually going to be just going to go in and just start to add a few brush strokes to some of these balloons. And whether it stays or not doesn't really matter, but since I have the colors anyway, I might as well make, um, make suggestions of shading and everything else. So I'm really just cleaning my brush with the same paint. So waste not, want not, and there's a nice relationship between those two. I'm going to address the balloons in a minute, but um, for now that was pretty much, and I'm just going to get in the back, I think with a bit more yellow in here. Just looks like a good spot for a bit more yellow. And I'm applying it with a really dirty um, black brush, so it's actually helping um, create a nice shadow back here. And I want to extend this out a little bit. I think it just suits great. Um, another thing I often work with at this stage in my paintings. Is there a reason, let me answer these questions. Is the look of a horizon in the moose on purpose? Oh, it looks like a, like a sea scene or something? No, no, you can read whatever you want into that. I think that's good. Is there a reason you are using more of your own images? Um, no, that's just kind of a, I would just say that that's, I've always used my own images um, it's just when I'm doing a series, like when I did my Charlie Chaplin series, that was actually because, thanks Ash, that was actually because it was, the whole Charlie Chaplin series had been created for TIFF, um, the Toronto International Film Festival asked me for Charlie Chaplin series, and, um, so I had to get the rights to use the image and blah, 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 blah. So that was that, but if I look back historically at a lot of my paintings, I tend to incorporate images um, because it's important to the telling of the story um, but generally I try to use a lot of my own images this is just kind of like a uh, like if, if you were to talk about the history of Christina Lovisa's paintings this is kind of moving back into it but I still will integrate other images like um, like the bird that I'm about to glue in here is um, is um, completely just uh, line drawings from um, uh, a 
bird book. This is, I think both of these are from a bird book that I have. I also have like a few anatomy books. I have like medical books and things like that. And so sometimes just using the images um, helps tell the story better. So like I said, I, I'm not 100% sure that this painting um, has a story yet in my mind. Um, like Ash, you guys might be formulating your own stories about what it is, but my paintings, um, to answer your question, Linda, my paintings are always and have always been um, my, my visual expression of me. So like writers write books and then when you read their autobiography, you know everything about them. My autobiography are my paintings and they are um, told in a visual sequence, I suppose. And so I'm often not really aware of what I'm creating at the time that I'm creating, but always when I paint a painting and I look back on it, I'm able to say, oh, that was that chapter. So when I'm, when I'm showing my paintings, like, and I'm talking about not my commercial work, I'm talking about, or paintings that's been created for a show or a series or something like that, when I'm talking about the art that I make because it's my visual telling of who I am, it is my autobiography. And, um, and sometimes I, I actually don't want to tell people the story behind it because maybe I feel it's too revealing or it's too personal or it's too something. Um, and, or maybe I don't like the truth that it is revealing. Um, I'm not really sure, but it's, it's, my paintings are always, always, always the autobiography of me. And I only discovered that probably 10 years into being an artist. And I look back at the paintings and when I had this realization, I started going through all the pictures of my old paintings. And then I was so sad that I, that I didn't understand what they meant at the time. And then I sold them or got rid of them or gave them away or whatever the case may be because somebody liked the color, somebody liked the image, it went well in their living room but realized I didn't realize till later that that painting was actually like super important to um, the, the history of Christina Louise, if you will, my autobiography. So I know that was a long-winded answer to a, a simple question, but I've always used my own images when I'm painting art for myself, but I integrate it with other images in order to um, better illustrate the chapter of. Thanks for the heart, whoever sent that. <laughs> that was very encouraging because I felt like I'd just been babbling for 10 minutes. Let me get back to this painting. Um, okay, so this has had a nice little chance to dry now. And now we have a better scale bird, right? So this massive bird that sat in here before was just like so big. And I don't know if I want a chickadee or if I want this little... Um, can't really tell it. Yeah, I mean, I want this other little birdie. I don't even know what he is because I've, I've removed the color from him. Um, and he's not labeled. So that's not helping me. He looks like a blue jay, but not. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I don't know my birds in, in black and white without their color. Not that I know my birds really with their color, but some of the obvious ones are quite obvious, right? Um, But now when I'm adding a little thing like this, so I think, I can't remember who asked earlier on, but somebody asked earlier on why I was leaving so much space around the moose in, in when I cut him out. So the reason I did that is because the fur and everything, the, the details surrounding that moose were really challenging because of um, whoops, they were really challenging to me because there was so much grass and everything else and I had to fake in legs and everything else and I was afraid if I cut him really close also that I, I might make a mistake in the anatomy if that made sense. So I was like, like in here, you couldn't really see that but I know that that reads moose, right? That beardy thing. So I kind of had to paint that in. So if I had had a hard line there all along, I would have had a hard time knowing where that thing was. Um, his double chin. I, 
yeah, yeah, I don't know what else to call it. So just like the tail, I know the tail is kind of there now. It looks like a little puff ball, but I'll, I'll fix that. Um, but yeah, so anyway, when I'm cutting out this bird, it's, first of all, it's a real shame that before the sky started falling out there, I lost my reading glasses. So I've been told many times, just go to the pharmacy. But the weird thing is, is my eyes are two different things because of astigmatism, and now I can't buy readers. So my arms are getting longer and longer and longer to accommodate my crummy vision. But I'm cutting this as close as possible so that I have because this is so clearly um, detailed, I can use that to my advantage in this little paste on thing. The only thing that my eyes cannot allow me to see are these little legs. So, um, you're welcome, Nikki. Um, so, I, I'm just gonna keep this here for reference so I know how to draw legs back in if needed because I really wouldn't be able to cut those out because my eyes do not allow that right now. All right, glue. So, does anyone know what I'm about to say? <laughs> glue likes to stick to glue. So for that reason, I'm putting glue on the back of my image and I have to put glue where the bird is going to sit. So, I'm only doing a very, very, very thin layer of glue. A, because I'm conserving glue, but B, because we don't want all this glue to seep out of, um, from behind here, because I'm gonna end up putting wax on here eventually, and it won't stick to my, my Mod Podge. Although my Mod Podge is mostly water now, because I keep extending it, but, um, for the sake of demonstrating properly, we'll assume that there's a lot of Mod Podge there. Now I'm gonna go around and I'm going to kind of push the bird down with um, a baby wipe. And I'm being careful not to rub the surface too much because um, the baby wipes are quite corrosive so they'll actually just take your image right off. So you just wanna make sure you just wipe off any excess glue when you're doing the fine detail Thing. and I'm removing any excess glue from where I, I applied my glue. So now I'm going to seat that because that bird just kind of looks like he's a little bit floaty, right? Like a sticker. So the way I seat that is I'm just going to use a small brush and, um, and then this, there's no other way to describe it, but, but this is that I do a dirty, brush kind of around certain parts. So it's the same like with the mousse. So by putting a bit of dark here and a bit of dark there and a bit of dark there and a bit of dark there, it kind of integrates them and seats them into the painting, right? So I want to do the same thing with the bird, but if I go all the way around, then I'm just going to end up making it look like an outline and I don't want it to look like an outline. I want it to really look integrated. And um, putting it underneath also helps it look a little bit like a shadow. I'm adding a bit of water to my brush. Very, very dry. There we go. And then I'll just put a little dark on the back. And then I might go in with a little bit of color. Okay, so that's that. Now I'm going to use a baby wipe and I'm just going to um, remove some of it and kind of blend. So that, like I said, it's a bit more of like a, a shadow and less of an outline, which is why it's only going in certain spots, not throughout the whole, around the whole thing. Looks like you could use maybe a little bit more behind his head and make it a little waterier. So it's not as intense. And I'm just going to go in and remove. Remember, because I'm just trying to stain this a little bit. I don't want it to look completely. 
completely painted out. There we go. Um, now I went for a bit of an original touch, so um, it looks slightly painted. I'm just going to use a finer brush if I can find one. That isn't hard as rock, that needs to be thrown out. Okay, so this brush is not bad. So I'm going to pick up a bit of the um, white paint with a teeny bit of yellow in it and maybe even just a teeny bit of blue in it. So again, I'm not mixing it. I don't know if you can see that brush, but it just has like, I don't know, like I have a little pink or a little yellow, little blue, little white, um, but nothing is really uh, mixed together. So I am going to, some of the highlights, I need a little more blue under the tail. The tail is lifting in one spot. So again, because I'm being so stingy with my glue, Um, I'll get back to my uh, my little uh, soapbox speech there for one quick sec. So when I was saying that it's my the way I paint is for my own um, it's like my own autobiography. It's it's the telling of me and my story, and I think it's really important as artists um, and creatives if we understand why we're making our art in the first place. And I, I can't tell you how long I didn't know what I was doing in terms of why I was compulsively creating. Um, I really can't. Uh, so anyway, I believe that that's really important to discover about yourself. Still not enough glue. Can you believe this? All right, I think I've watered my glue down to the point where it's just like hardly glue anywhere. I'm applying water now. So normally we're not in this situation, right? We just run to a craft supply store, art supply store and get what we need. So this is a little weird adapting, but maybe adaptation and, and change will be better for us in the long run. So actually one of our, um, uh, so if I use Charlie Chaplin in a piece, I could be in trouble. Um, well, it depends. There's so much to go on, on that. Um, if there's any type of a reproduction made of that painting, so if you used him in a painting and it's one original, then no, no one will do anything. If you sell it, that's fine. If you sell it to someone who is going to turn it into, let's say t-shirts or cocktail napkins or something like that, meaning now that that image, not of Charlie Chaplin, but the image integrated into your painting gets reproduced. If you print it on a t-shirt, now you're in reproduction, now you're in license infringement. So yeah, you do need to get a license when you're going to have any type of reproduction work. And um, so when I did the series, I was allowed to use the same images over and over and over and over again, but I basically had to sign that once I sell the painting, um, and, the, and then the, the family actually, or the, the um, not the family, the estate, actually was tracking my my image and now computers are so smart right that they have um, image recognition so if my image if i sold it basically what i had to sign the the contract for the license for was basically saying that i am not reproducing this right so somebody else now can, if they can get in trouble if they reproduce it, but I didn't have to, I wasn't reproducing it. So if you're an artist and you're making one of something and not reproducing it in any capacity and you're not selling it to someone for, like I've had lots of students who have told me that they've been approached because they want to, Amelia, if she's watching, she knows this, um, somebody wanted to use her images for reproduction and, um, I can't remember what she was going to do with it. Um, but anyway, this person wanted to use her images. But what Amelia had to be careful with was because she's a collage artist and she uses a lot of imagery, she had to be careful that like that 
if something was like blatantly obvious now in Amelia's case she's changed it so much but if she had put like Charlie Chaplin right on the front and then that woman used that or that company used that and reproduced it then um, that company wouldn't get in trouble Amelia would get in trouble okay so it's really complicated and it's only because I've been working for this uh, publishing company for a long time that I really got to understand this um, but um, now I always say that if you don't know if something has a copyright on it but let's say it has the name of the photographer it has the name of the artist or something like that I always say that use ethics as your guide so generally if I'm gonna find an image online I really like it and I can see who the photographer is or something like that I will say to them you know can I use your image for one painting and I get their permission I've been told no but I've, more often than not, I'm told, yes, no problem. I'd love to see what you do with it. So most people are, are great with knowing that, um, uh, you know, that, that you're being honest and you want to share. So if you use ethics as your guide, then generally you're going to be just fine. Um, but because of image recognition now in your computers, you can actually, like you can even do that, right? You can just say, even on Pinterest I saw it the other day and I thought, wow, that's an, a really interesting feature. So on one of my own paintings that I had uploaded, this like, I don't know, this sidebar tab came up or something like that and I don't even know how I clicked on it. I was like, it does this now? It said search for other images like this and it actually did this image recognition and it chose my image and then I went and found more things within Pinterest's um, vast um, environment and it, it collected images that looked similar. So I thought that was kind of scary in a way, but in a way it's really, um, it, it's, you know, it's, it's reality for us now. So uh, if you are being, being honest about where you're getting your images from and if you are, um, A little bit of blue on his head just looks beautiful so if anybody identifies this bird later and says to me they don't come in blue um, then that'll be well neither do moose right um, so yeah so anyway so that's that but what I was getting at was that I think it's really important that we all recognize why we make our own art and that if you don't if you can't answer that right away because it's a loaded question right like it's it's huge so why you make your art uh, you know, most people just say, I mean, I've heard this one a million times. I started making art because I didn't have the money to afford to put art on my own walls. And this is a family show, so I'm not going to say the BS word, but I'm sure maybe that's why you think you started and maybe you do have your own artwork hanging on the walls, but I don't believe that that's why your heart called you to create art in the first place. Okay. I believe that art is an expression and we just have to learn what to, what we're saying is authentically being representing who we are. So that's, that's my little um, aside when I was talking about, about my autobiography art. So now, just because I don't feel like painting in legs, I'm going to use this little sketch of the legs and I'm actually just going to carve it in because I've got black and then I've got all this paper, right? So I'm just going to carve it in so that there's, again, the eye can fill in like, oh, that's where the legs are, but I don't necessarily feel like getting into high detail legs, right? Like if I only spend a couple of hours um, working on things I can, I'm not going to spend two hours working on legs so um, yeah so now I just kind of scratch them in and now they kind of look like, like legs and thank goodness the eye does that because it looks great now I don't want them to be like so 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 white so again using my big vat of goo which is kind of taking on a weird color, but that's okay. I'm just going to put a little bit of brown into the scratches. I'm not going to cover the whole thing because the rest of the bird, I like the pop of the white. 
and I'm just going to blot. There we go. Just going to blot that and then I'll maybe scratch a little more to keep a little white highlight on there. There. Looks great. Okay, so now you can see the scale of this bird is so much better than the scale of the bird before. So I don't know if you can see the bird before, but the bird before was this big, right? Like he was the size of my hand. And now there's a tiny little bird that I'm sure if I stand back, I'll see that the scale is so much better, remembering that this is a tiny little baby moose. So, and then for um, Maria, I added a, uh, another leg. Thank you for that um, suggestion. And um, we addressed these little things. There's the bird. Now I think it's time for balloons. Where are we at in terms of time? Oh, time's up. Okay, so let me show you what I'm gonna do in terms of balloons. And then I don't think I have time today to do it. But when we come back to this on, uh, I'm taking tomorrow off, so when we come back to this on Monday, um, we'll be able, I'll be able to give you a little insight as to what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna use a piece of paper just to illustrate what it is I wanna do. So I don't want these balloons really to be completely all the same and all paint and all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some random pieces of paper and this one I cut off of something else. So I think it'll serve me well. Where does the time go when we do this? I can't believe it. Okay, I have a pen, better a pencil, but I only have a pen. So um, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to sort of trace one of these balloons as best I can just by lifting and following the line. If you have um, tracing paper, by all means use tracing paper. I do somewhere in this studio but I'm not 100% sure where. So I'm just going to fill that in. Here we have a blue balloon that's coming down. There we go. Okay, so I've got a rough idea of what this balloon looks like. So I'm going to take some random collage that I think might um, speak well to this overall um, painting and so I'm, I'm using color and pattern and I'm just going to cut out like different ones and then I can always add shading and texture and better shape and all that later but for now I'm just going to add a few different um, bits of collage that will that will be our balloons in the long run. Oh, let's hope that Home Depot was wrong and that my glue will be ready any time. Someone suggested that I do a, a show on, on substitutions. Art supply stuff for what you can buy in a hardware store and what you can get now, especially during pickup only. So that might be a good idea. I mean, how long stores are going to be closed. Okay, so I am going to substitute that balloon for that balloon. So that's basically what I might do. I might go in with um, some of the, uh, oops. I might go in with some of the other collage and just put random patterns in there. So, what kind of glue from Home Depot? Okay, so I actually ordered two things to make my own um, because I could get, you know, another little thing of Mod Podge and all that, but I don't know how long we're gonna be in this situation. So I ordered 
a big bucket of um, wallpaper paste and then a big bucket of white glue. So I'm actually going to make myself my own um, Mod Podge, or sorry, my yeah, I guess it's like a Mod Podge. I'm making, I'm making my own glue, um, which will be cellulose based, and then I'm going to add a bit of white glue to it so that it, the paint or the paper isn't strippable afterwards. Um, because I use a lot of glue because I'm painting so large and I'm adding these big things all the time and I add so many layers, um, I go through glue really, really quickly, and so. Uh, that's the first reason that I need to buy in massive quantity and then the second reason is because I needed it to um, uh, to be at the end of the day I need it to be not shiny and not plasticky so that the, the wax can stick to it um, all right kids so I guess that's it for today I hope you enjoyed watching you know some of the details come to life on this I um, this little bird is just making me add a little bit of yellow to them. There we go. I want to say yes, sir. Because it was like I was trying to, to put the brush down. And it was this little, little squeak asking for a little yellow. And there you go, a little yellow. Um, all right, I'm going to bring the camera in close so that you guys can see it. And thank you to everyone for continuing to watch. And uh, let's turn that camera around. And now let's do some of the detail stuff, okay? So if any of you are still with me, here we go. So, um, yeah, so let's go into the scratches. So this is the marks. These are those random scribbles that I told you I just filled in some of the things with a bit of lighter color so same down here with the legs right and then there's that maria there's that back leg thank you for that tip and then look at how detailed that face looks now even though there's no detail at all right like it's quite a pixelated fuzzy picture but from afar like this guy has a lot of um detail only because our eyes are so good at filling everything in so and you see if you look up close you can see my detail and my brush stroke is like completely bonkers but from afar especially on this scale it looks really um, pulled together so you see how skinny this line is like look at the size of my fingers compared to these lines right like there it's just a really skinny band and I only did that so that your eye didn't stop and sort of like trail off somewhere else which is why I pulled in a little of the darkness on the side so that the moose didn't become the only thing you saw. So you see this one balloon now, it's got like a little bit of paper in there. And then now, can you see the polka dots in the background, how subtle that is? Right, and you can still see like up close, there's still a little bit of an outline of the bird, which is right here, but the wax is gonna even that out. So we're not even gonna see that. But the polka dots now kind of add a really fun little whimsy to the background and it's so subtle and it, it's not something that I had initially put in there so that's why I opted to go with them um, with these that that paper turned around backwards um, was just because it, it became an ad, you know a, an additional layer and it always became it became a great layer rather than a layer that I had could have predicted so then up here you can see a little repeat of that piece up there and then there's the black bar on the side which balances things and then um, here's a piece of paper let me get this and wet it so yesterday when I stood back and look at the whole thing all I'm doing is wetting a piece of paper that I had cut because when I stood back and I looked at the entire painting it seemed to me like I wanted to see if a little bit of um, the dark would look good over here. So I added just a wet piece of paper. So let's see if we can stand back and see whether or not it balances. So I think it's a bit high. So I'll move it down and try again. And you know, it might just be too big, it might not be necessary at all, but um, 
that's just something that I do. I just play with little bits of paper and stick things on and walk away and see how they look. I think I'm actually going to wait on that piece until I um, see what the balloons look like. Because now that I see that one um, gray balloon or gray like charcoal balloon that I just added, I feel like I might have enough going on over there. But anyway, I only stuck it on with water so it easily comes off. But um, yeah. Do you scratch on the mousse? Only when dry or not at all? Um, oh yeah, I'll scratch on the mousse for sure. So if, I mean, so you can see like here, right? Like there's some obvious paper tears and things like that. So I can either rip that paper off or um, choose to glue it back on. But you can see where my blades cut through and things like that. I know I'm gonna end up waxing, so I might um, just let the wax stick that in also there's like all these cut lines and marks so if i wanted to add a bit more um i don't know detail i guess like here would be a good spot let me just show you here so if i do some scratches into that paint where it got a little thick on me you can see i can just create a little bit of detail in there oh, i know how, how about we get rid of some of that puffiness from his cotton ball tail here there we go we can scratch that out so yeah um, I like I said before I really have no attachment to any parts of the painting but I do know when to walk away so do you scratch on the moose oh, okay so um, I know when to walk away and so this painting is feeling closer and closer and closer to done except for those balloons now so um so i would be really hard pressed to do any more on the bottom because i'm actually feeling quite good about the bottom if the bottom were to speak to me now and say oh you need to change the background to red or something like that i would probably have to ignore that little impulse because my impulse was really strong initially to change out those four big bands that i had from the initial picture um and thanks to sophie's um uh, little um, uh, comparison photos you can see the beginning it had collage on there that just went in too early that wasn't feeling right to me at all so this feels so much better to me and I like where it's going I just need to work on those balloons a little bit right like I'm trying not to make this about the balloons I'm trying to make this about um, balancing out the mousse so that you don't just keep your eyes on the bottom so the balloons are really there for um, you know for color for balance for that sort of thing but at the end of the day the uh, they do have to look a little better than they do right now so because I just roughed them in with some really quick paint so um, yeah so the other thing I have to do is I have to come in here and I have to put those lines back in right of the strings and other than that I'm not touching the bottom too much I don't think I'll uh, I'll like I said I think I'll ignore any impulses I have to make any massive changes on that because I don't think it's necessary oh and speaking of um, the moose so let me show you in here so those lines got scratched into the dark so I didn't have to bother to paint them in and then also the contour of this leg seemed really obvious to me when I stood back so I scratched it in and then I thought I would paint it but now that I see the scratches I think it's enough again for our eye to just go okay this contour and that white matches like this contour so the two are enough like I said your eye does really incredible things of uh, balance and um, and figuring stuff out for us we don't need everything spelled out for us um so that's it have a lovely weekend everybody happy easter happy passover I, I i'm not sure that happy and passover and happy and easter are actually words that are traditionally words that go together but um however you are celebrating um or spending time in this long weekend enjoy it and make the best of it um stay creative bye everyone